Jim in Fargo, North Dakota. See more better with freeprescriptionlenses.com. And today I'm going to cut the invisible bifocal of the Essilor Ideal Advanced. It's a digital freeform progressive lens with transitions gray for your Oakley 8093, which is the Milestone 3.0, the 49 eye size, and the color. O2, which is the matte black ink, and let me start off by saying I am an authorized Oakley dealer. I can get anyone any frame you want. I'm just not allowed to legally individually list all the frames with the prices on my website, so just email me or call me if you want to know if, which one I can get. In fact, if you don't believe me, let me just jump back, kick myself, kick myself, kiss myself, and say yes, I am an authorized Oakley dealer. I, can, I had to do the 60-piece buy-in to get them. I've got some sunglasses, the semi-rimless, meaning that there's no rim on the bottom of the frame. And then I have the next shelf, so just plastics, the metals. In fact, this is actually the Holbrook, the metal Holbrook sunglass, but it was so nice. I took the dark lenses out and put clear lenses in there because that would be a really cool pair to wear. Of course, you know, normally that's an old trick I do is take dark lenses out of sunglasses. And of course, we got all different kinds. Anything you guys want, I can make it happen. In fact, I think this will be my next pair. It is the 8149 color 03, which is the polished clear. This is the the R, the Pitchman R carbon that has the carbon fiber temples. I've got one here, the regular Pitchman that has just the regular metal temples. Same shape up front, but I just love that carbon fiber temple on there. So let me put these back. Let me get to work. So cause the quicker I make them, the quicker you wear them. So. Yes, I'm an authorized Oakley dealer, so just email me. I can get you any frame that you want as long as it's available, that size and that color. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to take out your original, take the frame out of all the original packaging, and you're going to receive all the original packaging that Oakley sends to me, your Oakley hard shell case. Inside is the soft carrying cloth, the carrying bag, which doubles as a cleaning cloth. And, of course, the frame. And it comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping. And I'm going to put that on there when I ship to you. And again, this is the, the Oakley 8093, the Milestone, in the color matte black ink and the 49 eye size. It comes in several colors, but only one size. So let me go ahead and begin. I'm going to pop out your original demo lenses. And of course, you're going to receive all that to make sure you're getting the authentic frames. And I'm going to put your frame into the tracing element of my blocker. And before I hit start, I want to barcode this number in there. So years from now, should you ever need new lenses for this frame, I can cut them based on what's programmed into the computer. You don't have to mail the frames back to me. You are Secret Agent 1166. Of course, this reminds me of what happened in the year 1166 in July. Henry II of England con conquered the northwest portion of France known as Brittany. And then uh, donated it, uh, gifted it to his son, Geoffrey, Joffrey, with a G-E-O. But of course, you knew that living in North Dakota. You knew all about the King Henry conquering Brittany. All right, let me begin. Oh, let me barcode that in there. Secret Agent 1166. And I'm going to hit this little circle. A little stylus as the clamps are going to hold that in place. And the stylus is going to come up and go around and trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Oakley frame and you'll receive one free pair of clear or single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars you will get reimbursed for this prescription whether they are a prescription or not. Now you upgraded to the invisible bifocal you also upgraded to the Transitions Gray. So, I am an Essilor man using Essilor equipment and you're going to be getting the Essilor Ideal Advanced Digital Freeform Progressive Lens. That is a uh, level 4 tier. There's, Even though it's invisible, there's several different qualities to what you can get. And this is the top tier. This is what insurance companies will reimburse the most for. And I will give you the itemized receipt so you get reimbursed for the best lens possible. On the internet, you only get one chance to make everything perfect, so I've got to give you the best for the least amount of money. So that is what we'll be doing. I need to get your lenses prepped. 
This is a block, or as I like to call them, Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. So I need two double-sided adhesive stickers, of which I've got three, but now I've got one. The black side is the sticky side. I'm going to line this up onto the first block, and now the second one. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Now on the back is a little silver button that is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice tonight. It's going to attach itself to something magnetical there in the arm to hold that in place. And I've already taken the time to get your lenses prepped. That is the optical center. Those two tells me that it's oriented in there just perfectly. Let me enter your pupillary distance, which is 34 for the right eye. The computer starts at 32.5. So I'm going to tap the plus button a few times till we get to 34. I need to raise the optical center up to 23. That is where your invisible bifocal will begin and sitting directly in front of your pupil. This blue cross is the geometric center of the frame. Your eye is just above that inside the orange crosshairs. Just like the crosshairs of a scope, I measure vertically and horizontally to make sure your lens is dead center in front of your pupil. So, let's get, uh, this is, if that were single vision, I would use that layout, but this is a progressive, so I need this grid that shows me that goes there. These other two dots are going to line up there. I tell you, Essilor makes some good equipment, don't they? Essilor! In fact, they're the ones who just bought Luxottica, the parent company of Ray-Ban, Polo, Oakley, Versace. Those are the lines I carry along with many, many more. And everything is lined up. 34, 23. We're looking good. Hit that button. The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the right lens. We're going to do the same thing for the lens that ain't right. Pull that away. Line up the magnet there. Oh, come on. Get in there. Get in there. Your pupillary distance is 32. We're going to drop down and hit the minus button a few times. Go down in half millimeter increments until we're at 32. Same optical center height. Get everything lined up on the grid where it should be. And come on, come on now, come on. It's hard seeing some of those dots from time to time. It's time for me to get a new pair. In fact, I just got a new prescription. It's time for me to order something nice. Like I said, I think I'm going to get that Oakley next. So, that's on there. Now, this is the edger. This is gonna, what's going to do all the work while I continue to run my mouth. It costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out, buy their own, put it on your own kitchen counter. Then you can cut your own lenses at home, and you won't need the guy with the two thumbs and the bad jokes to cut them for you. The actual cutting wheel is this diamond-crusted wheel that's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away your lens material until it's the final size. This wheel in the center is going to put the V-shaped bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. Let's go ahead and wake up the computer. 1166, that's the shape that I'll be cutting. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high-index plastic or Trivex, I would select that, but we're going to stick with polycarbonate. I'm not going to polish the edge of the lens because it's not going to be seen. I'm not going to put a safety bevel on the front convex surface of the lens because it won't be protruding from the frame. But I am going to put a safety bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens. Even though it won't be protruding from the frame, but I'll show you why in just a moment. Let's go ahead and press that on there. Now the magnet is going to do its job a second time. It's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the chuck. By now, you know, I like to call it the Charles because I don't know this machine well enough to call it Chuck. I'm telling you, buy your own. You don't have to listen to my bad jokes anymore. Someone emailed me today and asked how I would do a video. And I told him I would come up with all new and even funnier jokes. And then said, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're getting the same old jokes. Hit that button. The door closes. The clamp shuts. I'm making a god-awful sound. And then it's going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough at first to fit into the frame. And you can see it's going around tracing the shape. And then the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once. is measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing, of which you have none. But if these were strong prescriptions, I can move the bevel forwards or backwards. I know that's opposite of the direction, but if I move the bevel forwards, that would force the lens back into the frame. Or if I move the bevel backwards, it would force it forwards, which I would never do. But I do have that capability. Now, if you see light flickering in the background, that is water there to catch the optical sawdust. Your lens is cut dry, meaning that no water sprays onto the lens for the duration of the cutting cycle. Where plastic, high-index plastic, and Trivex lenses cut wet, meaning the water will spray onto those lenses. Now, water will spray for the last 20 seconds just to wash away any optical debris that you may begin to see forming on the edge of the lenses. 
but as I mentioned your lenses are made out of polycarbonate polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic they are virtually unbreakable these are high impact ballistics grade lenses the same lens material that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel and flying debris and speaking of protection protection all polycarbonate lenses come with a hundred percent UVA and UVB protection built into the lenses unlike the lotions creams and sprays that you constantly have to reapply in Fargo North Dakota to protect your skin from sunburn but we know what the Sun can do to your skin where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes unlike the lotions creams and sprays that have to be reapplied every couple hours this is permanent and never needs to be reapplied so with water spraying it tells me it's in the last 20 seconds in just a moment a lever is going to come out at the end of that lever is a spinning wheel something you would find at the end of a dremel tool and that's what giving a super fine coating to the rear surface of the lens just to smooth out any portion that's left over from the cutting cycle now if these were thick lenses and any portion of that lens protrude from the back surface of the frame and come into contact with the cheek it'll be nice and smooth but even though these will not protrude from the frame i will show you why i put a safety bevel on there I'm going to go ahead and open this door with my mind. You like that? I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can. It just takes me a couple hours, but I can do it. And actually, while, while, listen to me, while the lens is out of the frame, I'm going to go ahead and clean those markings off that I had marked right and left on there. Just because I don't like to get it, with it being so near the edge, <coughs> I don't like getting any of the, the chemicals, this all off optical grade acetone which is about forty dollars a bottle if not more for a quart just because a whole bunch of people just don't buy it so again everyone go out flood the market and buy these and drive the price down would you you see i need to order some more so hurry up and do that so let's see if the lens fits now the reason why i put a safety bevel on the back surface of the lens even though it's not going to protrude from the frame i tuck it in at the outside corner and i push down with my thumbs here at the nasal area and I don't want any of that lens, if it was rough, to mar the finish of your frame. And that's why I do that, even though you have no edge thickness whatsoever. So, let's go ahead and flip that over to L. Press that on there firmly. Put the magnet into the Chuck, the Charles, the Chucky baby, the Chuckster, Sir Chuckarama. Okay, everyone gets a 50 cents off the next sale if they can tell me something else to name for this Chuck. So, hit the green arrow, which is start in every language, just like before. The door closes, the clamp shuts a little quieter this time because it was wet from the cutting cycle. It had dried out before. And, of course, the lens is going to be traced by the two white styluses, tracing the shape of the left side of the frame, making sure that the lens is large enough, and, of course, measuring the thickness to know where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing. Of which, Jim, you got nothing. You got nada. You got no edge thickness whatsoever. What did I tell you? That's why I use those thinner, lighter weight, unbreakable, bulletproof lenses with 100% UVA and UVB protection. Now, most people don't want you to know that. Most people in my industry, in the optical field, make their living off commission. And they're not going to tell you that polycarbonate lenses come with anti-glare, excuse me, with with uh, UV, 100% UVA and UVB protection. They want you to pay for that, even though it's already embedded into the lens. So, I'm going to take the block off, use my hand approved drying method, throw that in there, pull the sticker off, add to my sticker collection here. So this was when I bought the new equipment. This was the first 11 months. This is the last three months. It's playing catch up. It's getting there. It's getting there. So we're going to come down here to the lensometer. We're going to spin the axis wheel to nothing because your right lens is spherical, plus 150 sphere. So I'm going to place it in above that black dot and read the power and I am getting plus 150 exactly halfway between 1 and 2 that's because in the optical world we use a measuring device called a diopter spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R starting at 0 and going up in quarter increments from there 0.25, 0.50, 0.75, 1, 1 and a quarter, 150 you have six steps of far-sighted correction you're actually near-sighted correction you are far-sighted with your glasses off you see better farther away than you do up close so you need six steps of nearsighted correction to be able to see better up close and now your left eye you need seven steps of correction you're on the seventh rung of a the ladder there and you have one step of astigmatism correction which 
is the smallest you can have. There's a stigma over the word astigmatism, also known as cylinder, the abbreviation CYL. You have two curves on your eye, one curve, a spherical curve going this way, an astigmatic curve going this way, and it's how you line those two curves up to make everything nice and crisp. We're going to turn that fine tune knob to 65, a normal axis wheel 0 to 90 to 180. We're going to turn that to about 65, just past the 45 meridian. Now you have the invisible bifocal, so you need an additional seven steps of correction for up close. It's called the add because it means in addition to what's on top. So if you were to buy reading glasses, your left eye would be three and a quarter, 150 plus 175. For your left eye, you need about a 350. But really three and a quarter, 350 if you were to buy over the counter reading glasses, probably about a 275 if you needed to see something at a computer at arm's reach. But you can just experiment, take your driver's license out when you go to a drugstore if you are buying something just for the computer and hold something in arm's reach and make sure that you can read the, the numbers. The higher the power, the closer you have to hold it. A jeweler's loop is about a plus 10, but they hold things this close. They don't look at a diamond this far away. The jewelers don't. So let's come down here. We're going to grab your left lens out of the what is it called? What is it called? Someone's going to get 50 cents off when they come up with a new name. I might splurge and give them 55 cents off if I'm in a good mood, which I'm not in a good mood today because I just had to get a crown put on there. Oh, no one budgets an extra $1,500 for a crown. I cracked a tooth during Thanksgiving. Yeah, I was given thanks and cracked a tooth. So that's why I don't give thanks, all right? So, <laughs> yes, I'm still caffeinated because I had to drink coffee late in the day. I didn't want to drink before going in. And, you know, you never own coffee. You just rent it. And I didn't want to have to get out of the dentist chair and I run to the bathroom. So I didn't have any coffee before going in. So I've been drinking it all day. And by the way, I love saying this. And I told it right to my dentist. Is dentists make us look cheap. Opticians, that is. They charge a whole lot more. So we're going to tuck it in at the outside corner first. And then using my thumbs, I press down at the nose. And actually, it did not want to go in. So a little bit stronger lens. So let's take it down a tenth of a millimeter goes in that's 1 20th 1 10th of a millimeter press that back on there firmly hit retouch the door closes the clamps gonna shut but this time it's just gonna go straight down onto the bevel wheel that old carpenter saying you can always cut more off of a piece of wood you can never add it back on so I start a little bit large and work my way down but I'm gonna take it off in increments until it's the final size if this I could use heat turn this on expensive heater and that makes plastic more pliable but I like to do what's known as the cold mount you married guys know what I'm talking about <laughs> all right honey don't kill me I just love that joke um, I mean it's a joke I'm kidding I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a joke breaker I crack jokes um, so but the reason why I don't heat it up is if I did it would cause the frame to stretch or we in the industry called roll if you can imagine your bevel being like a gutter if that lens were too large eventually the bottom of your frame the thinnest part would begin to roll outwards giving you an ugly cosmetic look as well as shortening the lifespan of the frame so I do apologize for being a perfectionist I don't apologize for not being a perfectionist in anything else that I do but you want a perfectionist like me cutting every pair of lenses that get shipped to worldwide and last time I checked Fargo North Dakota was still on the earth I could be wrong the next glacier melt it may just slip right off the earth all you flat earthers out there you would love that wouldn't you see something fall off the planet so you know there's flat earthers all over the globe <laughs> see what i did there see what i did all right i stole that from uh oh what's his name oh the great astrophysicist his name escapes me now just like uh, fargo during the next ice age all right so Again, tuck it into the outside corner, push down the nose. Come on, come on. There we go. Now it snaps in. I just had to get the leverage on there. Pop that off. Drop that back in there. The OCD in me, I've got to put it on the correct side. Pull the sticker off. All right, Jim, I'm going to let you place the sticker. I'm going to round and round, and when you say stop, I will place it where you... Oh, you said it. Okay, that's where it went. It's folded over, too. It's going to make it nice and thick. You like that? The original one and mini me let me see if i can reshape this one press them on their firm so it doesn't fall over there we go my chia pet come down here we're going to spin that fine tune knob to 65 halfway between 60 and 70 
That's generally where you find 65. This new math, I'm not too sure. We're going to check the power. I'm getting plus 175, 1, 1 and a quarter, 150, 175. And now you have a quarter step of astigmatism. Let's check for that. And we end up back down at 150. How, why is that? If you had a dollar 75 and then loaned 25 cents to somebody, you would have a dollar 50. That's where we're at, a dollar 50 in the black, in the plus. So, your pupillary distance for your right eye is 34, for the left is 32, for a combined value of 150. All right, 66. I was just seeing if anyone was paying attention. So I'm going to turn the card around, place my PD stick against my thumb. That's the inches. Let's use the millimeters against my thumb. And then when we hold it up to the left lens, we're getting 66. So that is cut perfectly. Your optical center height is 23. That's what's going to sit directly in front of your pupil where the invisible bifocal begins. When you look at the center of the frame, we're getting 23 millimeters. We're going to do the same thing here. 23. Man, the kid is good. You know, I couldn't have done a better job if I had cut these lenses myself. So, this is the portion that as I clean your lenses, that I like to mention that there's free shipping anywhere in the U.S., but when you get these in the mail, there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The so three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set it on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. And I flip it over, press down, there is no wobble. And see, I'm part of that 80%, but with some miraculous thing about my Oakley. And of course, I'm wearing the A132 in the color... Oh, what colors is it? 03 Universal Blue, the blue orange to go with my blue orange shirt. You gotta love that. My orange cleaning cloth. In fact, let me go ahead and oh, that's hang on, that's mine. Let me put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing. I thought I was cleaning your lenses. Let me clean your lenses off before I turn them dark for you. But as I was mentioning, just stop by your local place. 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But turn it upside down, press, and there's no wobble. I close each temple to make sure they overlap. And they do, and the neither temple is askew like that. So this is what your lenses look like clear. Oh, I see a little dust on there. I'm going to go ahead. So not only do I send out a selfie request in every package to have your picture on the website, but I send out instructions not only how to care for your frame and lenses, but for your Oakley case and Oakley cleaning cloth and the premium microfiber cleaning cloth that I provide. So those two will last you for years. No other seller does that on the internet, I'm told. And when you get this in the mail and you see that little wrinkle, I field test every cleaning cloth to make sure that it works. So you can't tell me you can't use this to clean your lenses because I just did it. It is wrinkle approved. So this is what your lenses look like clear. Look at me, you're still running my mouth. Enough that some dust that was floating around in here from this thing got on the lens. But this is what they look like clear. I'm going to go ahead and activate them, meaning that I'm going to expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light here in my little transitions box. Now as you can see it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for all transition lenses to darken. It takes about 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15 to return back to virtually clear. Now this is important Jim, pay attention. All transition lenses will get dark on day one and continue to darken every day for the first two weeks they're exposed until they reach their maximum darkness. After that, they will work for years and maximum performance. The only time they won't work is if you're behind the windshield of your car, your windshield has its own UV protection built in so your dashboard doesn't crack from sitting in the sun all day, and that's why they won't turn dark in a car. Now, if you have a convertible or a motorcycle, then they will darken. And they're also temperature sensitive, meaning they'll get darker when it's 85 and below than they will when it's 95 and above. But I remind everyone when it's 100 degrees outside, you're miserable, they're miserable, nobody works 100% when it's 100 degrees. But being in Fargo, North Dakota, I don't think that's a problem. So that's the first time they have been activated. That gray lens looks great with the gray frame. Of course, they call this the matte black ink. But now there is the newer lens I've been, you've been seeing a lot of in my videos called the Transitions Extra Active. They will get 30 to 50% dark behind the windshield. They will also get um, darker in hotter weather for those people who live in Florida, California, Texas. Anyone who is in or overseas in hotter climates, you may want to think about the transitions extra active with uh, being in Fargo, North Dakota. I don't think you have to worry about getting 100 degrees too many days out of the year. But 
that's it this is the first time they've been activated they're going to continue to darken come on jim we talked about this don't you remember so that's it if uh, you like what you've seen even if you didn't like it or if you like abuse please subscribe to my youtube channel you can follow me on facebook and instagram is freeprescriptionlenses.com on twitter is free rx lenses you can if you have any questions email me through the contact me page on freeprescriptionlenses.com or just email me directly at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com that's a lot to say it really is or better yet as i like to remind everyone leave a question or comment in the comment section below that way other people can benefit from your inquisitive nature you may have asked a question they didn't think of and they can learn from you so jim and fargo north dakota hope you enjoyed watching as i cut your invisible bifocal your essilor ideal advance with transitions gray for your oakley 8093 color 02 which is the matte black ink in the 49 eye size again this also is known as the milestone 3.0 again as i mentioned at the beginning i am an authorized dealer i just can't put them on the website so just email me if there's a frame and you know already it would help be helpful if you guys knew what size and color that you wanted and i'll get you a price of course all frames come with uh free clear lenses and there are upgrades available transitions anti-glare polarized transitions extra active extra active with the new mirror coatings you can get on there or if you just have unused health savings account money for this year i can send you these with just clear non-prescription lenses you can just pay for the frame these are are exable frames and uh, you can write that off on your taxes as well as your health savings account of course you can see as i keep running my mouth hey, these are getting lighter and lighter so that's it again jim i can't thank you enough for your for your business and everyone else out there has gotten the chance to see how i bring that love and feeling back to glasses thank you